by the government in 1988 uh, to analyze, to collect demographic data of the country. Uh, they did, uh, you know, collected last census data in 2006, if I'm not mistaken. There is need for another census, they say. Uh, the UN has said that we are 201 million people now. The NPC said, mm, we are not exactly that until we conduct a census. The issue of conducting a census is another kettle of fish. But like I always say on the show, if you cannot you c measure, you can manage. You know, you have to measure first, then you manage. Paul Alaja is with me right now. He's the senior economist at SPM Professionals. We're looking at the change government that is winding down the next eight days or so. Uh, what does four plus four mean? What does next level mean? Paul, good to have you on the show. Thank Welcome you, again. You, to the program. Um, I did say at the beginning of the program we're starting a series. I'm actually, st I started a series today. So yes, you are the first guest I'm having uh, on this series throughout this week to take a look at different sectors of the economy. And uh, let's try to see if we can set an agenda for Mr. President for the next level. Uh, let me ask you, is the worst over? Mm. Uh, <laughs> the worst of it in terms of when I was at the wall over there, I did take a look at all the data, uh, at least a few of the data, and um, not so palatable. So it's the worst over. Yeah, uh, the answer to that would be what we are doing today to influence tomorrow. What we did yesterday is what infl is what gave us the kind of result we have today. in terms of numbers mm -hmm. today. Number themselves don't change. You cannot, as a football team, you cannot be playing football and stop attacking and aiming at the goalposts and start looking at the scoreboard and say that scoreboard, I hope you change because I'm in Ramadan, I'm fasting, or because I'm having 40 days fasting and prayer as Christian, that it will change. No. What changes the scoreboard is by scoring goal and by defending opponent from scoring your point. So when you look at what other countries have started do or have been doing in the last 20 years, countries that we had no recourse to respect in terms of the economic policy and the expansion of the economy vis-a-vis uh, -vis China, Indonesia, India, etc., etc., these countries were not looking at, were not just hopeful. They were doing things that will make the economy and their, 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 their country expand in terms of economic prosperity. They are all benefiting from this prosperity today. While Nigeria Bureau of Statistics released 2.01 GDP growth rate for Nigeria year on year, it released minus 13.8% quarter on quarter GDP growth rate. China on the other hand just released figures that mm. says the economy has grown by over 6%, mm, 6 Indonesia yeah. by over 5%, India by over 6%. This country, a country with sizable number of population, bigger than Nigeria in some regards, but Nigeria with our population, mass land, with natural resources, crude oil, which many of these countries that we compare ourselves, we don't even have. Where else can we say if we continue to engage in similar thing over and over, and we hope that difference will come or change will come, we might as well be engaging in a Madras demonstration. Now, do you think, my question again is, do you think that the worst is actually behind us? Bearing in mind that all this data, you just said that you don't need to change the, you don't, the football team doesn't change the scoreboard. They do that by scoring goals. Yes. Uh, with the, have, uh, has this administration scored some goals in the last four years? Yeah, some goals, yes. We've had good goals and we have own goals. We scored good goals by looking at uh, how the body language of government have been in terms of anti-corruption war. Clearly, government, so many things, so one of the things people would say about the first administration of President Buhari would be his posture for anti-corruption. Whether that worked or not, it's not really the issue. The issue here is that perception is stronger than reality. People perceive that government is doing everything possible. That's one, two, ease of doing business. Nigeria moved from 169 to uh, to meaningful number of points. Nigeria jumped further to 145, mm -hmm. now 146 on ease of doing business. So those are good goals that the government has scored in terms of economy. But when it comes to own goals, unemployment grew 
from less than 10 percent to above 23 percent due to unemployment it's crazy yeah, in terms of numbers you saw inflation grew from 9.9 percent at some point to 18 percent but thanks for policies combination by monetary authorities that brought unemployment back uh, to I mean that brought inflation to now 11 point uh, three, seven. Three, seven, that we have uh, according to the new figures ready by uh, Nigeria Bure I mean National Bureau of Statistics so when you look at all of that you see that yes government have scores of goals but they are also home goals how do we now know the difference is it 2-2 two, two? is it 3-2 three, is it 3-3 three, three? that is led for discussion when you look at all the indicator what is happening to education what is happening to health what is happening to poverty what is happening to interest rate what is happening to business confidence among others then we can say that maybe we scored more home goals than scoring our opponents. Mm. In, in the midst of all this, in the midst of a uh, changed government in the last four years, Nigeria was declared as the world's uh, capital of poverty. Uh, we saw that also the government, uh, you know, did not really want to own up to that because at least I heard the vice president in one of the fora uh, did say, oh, 87 million Nigerians are poor, which is you actually said that the government has achieved a few things in the last four years, isn't it? Yes. Uh, the economics of Mr. President, has it really worked? Uh, well, um, is this, is this, has it really worked? Yes or no? Just yes or no? I would say half. Or I, I would not half say no yes. or half, half yes? I would not say yes or no because, you see, the economy is the way we are trained. We are not to say yes or no to things. We are, so, we are to look at... But GDP as a scientist, I'm to say yes or no. Yes, but I'm a social scientist. So we look at what GDP rate was. We look at what it is now. We look at what unemployment was. We look at what it is now. We look at what poverty rate was. We look at what it is now. We look at what health was. We look at what it is now. We look at what human development index was. We look at what human development index is now. So as a medical doctor, we will diagnose and tell you what we hope, wh what we think we should do. If you don't take it and you want to do self-medication, well, is it isn't that a yes or no? You're just trying to be politically it's right. Not, there's or nothing, politically there's right. nothing, there's well, nothing political about at 9.9%. The numbers, 9%. yes, the numbers are there. Yeah. If you followed my analysis from the beginning of the show, yes. I actually took the pain to chronicle all the data from 2015 yes. till date, at least. Yes. The, the, you know, unemployment, GDP, inflation, foreign reserves, and all yes. of that. Yes, I agree. But now you, you want me to do a one-point summary of all the figures. I'm saying that I would prefer we look at inflation. Is it yes or no? That would be no. I would look at ease of doing business. Is it yes or no? That would be yes. I would like to see human capital index. Is it yes or no? That would be no. I would like to see health. Is it yes or no? No, it's no because of Lassa fever. We would like to see, no, there's so many indicators. We would like to see budgetary process. Yeah. Is it yes or no? That is how we are trained now, to respond to answers. Now, let me take you up on this. If you take a look at all the data, Human capital development, a no. Unemployment, a no. GDP, perhaps a no, but a yes now going up and Thank all you. of that. If you take all the aggregate of these numbers, yes. where would you put us? I would As now compare Nigeria. economics worked? Yes or no? It has not worked Good. Up, to, up to the expectation of barinomics because the expectation of barinomics is, was documented on economic recovery and growth, growth plan, plan, who projected between 4 to 7 percent GDP growth rate, who say, which also mentioned that inflation would be better than what we witnessed, and which says that unemployment is of doing business. We see significant improvement in all of that. So we cannot summarily say no or yes. Of course, if the answer might be closer to no, and this is also to, inf uh, to tell policymakers that we need to do more so that the trust people have would improve. And there is no trust when there is insecurity. There is no trust when there is poverty and unemployment. There will be no trust. So how do we create all of this? So you said there will be no, there will be no security, there will be no solution to unemployment if there is no power. So you now go back to the argument of what Nigeria has spoken about since the 80s. How do we make power work? How do we make housing work? How do we make, how do we provide water for people? And some of these things is not just buarinomics. It has to do with state governonomics, quote and unquote, because federal government is one government out of 39, 38 government, if you like, 36 government and FCT. What exactly are other states doing? If you look at um, the, 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 the contribution, the IGR to state revenue, when you look at IGR that uh, the state, state government are earning, only 10 makes above 12% of what they collect from federal government. 
the remaining, uh, about 17 of them, are not getting up to even 10%. So such states are the fee to be state, which means if federal government decides to go on strike, the way labor are threatening to go on strike, and federal government say, we are not, we are going to strike, we are not going to share fair for the next six months. The truth is that so many states might cease to exist. So most of the unemployment figure is not just happening in Abuja, or it's happening for federal government, it's also happening for state government. And this is why political parties, dominant political parties, APC and PDP, the two political parties that are, that are uh, have the, the affairs of, of government at the state level, must do more. Consider this. Economic recovery and government was supposed to be for 36 states, and FCT, as well as federal government. Only six states have adopted the model of economic recovery and growth plan. Now, it is not the problem of Nigeria that pro government have refused to work together, even government is in political party, which means the trust in economic recovery and growth plan might not even be there now the by the those that are supposed to make yeah, the policy. Yeah, the question is even what kind of push are we seeing for the economic ERGP? Uh, because sometimes it seems to me that government has even forgotten... I think so, too. It's plan yes. of ERGP. I think so too. As it were, because even what we're seeing across board now with the data and all of that, it's, it's going parallel. Yes, yes, to what ERGP has projected. And that is where we think policymakers, particularly we, we provide the wake-up call for government, from federal government to state government. And you saw just at, after the exit of Kemi Adioshun, who was a former minister of uh, finance, you are not seeing that coordination. You know, we complained there was not enough coordination. Now we are even looking for coordination uh, at, at a finance level, at a fiscal policy, uh, why you, you see seeing that a mayfele is retained. Yeah, against what many people might have said, I think retaining a mayfele might still provide consistency for monetary authority because we saw what, what we witnessed with Kemi Adioshan, particularly after she exited the Ministry of Finance, you, you saw some level of coordination that many analysts, many economists across the country are looking for really might not be there. So it could it be the option of president in choosing his people, those that will help steer the administration? Because when we say that Buhari no mix is talking about the think tank, the economic think tank of President Muhammadu Buhari, have they done enough? And you know the truth, Nigerians don't want to care who these people are. They believe that we have given you that single vote as individual on election day. We also believe that because we trust you and your integrity, we will use it to find competent people, right people, to steer the administration of this country, particularly at, as it affects the economy of this country. And now, I hope that in coming period, the president will do the needful. And what is the need for now? Because if we take a look at just the question will be, has Buharinomics works, uh, worked or was there no Buharinomics in the first place or everyone was just doing their thing in silos? Uh, well, well, I, I do, do, do you understand? That's the coordination we're talking about. The other part of it is if there was a Buharinomics, should there be a remodeling of that Buharinomics for the next level agenda? I think there was, I think there was, but it came late. That is economic policy of government. It took almost a year <laughs> before to get ministers to and get all minister, that. Six months to get minister. Now, which document will they work with that will be holistic in terms of that people can see as something that will drive economic policy of the country? It took another six months or more, and we've launched it more than two, three times, talking about economic recovery and growth plan. So if we have not achieved, if the policy, you know, government have research, written a uh, set, set exam and provided the marking scheme, which is the economic recovery and growth plan this time. And if we have not achieved up to that, does it mean that to develop Nigeria or to grow Nigeria, because it was purely a growth-driven uh, policy, not so much of development was embedded in it, but you cannot even have developed if you don't have growth, so that is excusable. So if you don't have that achieved significantly, what should be done? I think that those that have performed well, government, uh, the president might decide to retain them. But those that have not done enough, government might be looking at the other side. Are there, are there people that have performed well in this administration? Oh, clearly. If you ministers? look at sector, if you look at sector, which sector has improved? You see, the, the, the report is clearly, it, it's very clear. National Bureau of Statistics has been giving us what has been happening to transport, what has been happening to housing, what has been, so all the sectors are there. You can look at, has the economy been improving? What part of the economy has improved? Agriculture, by what extent has it improved? So those that have not improved, you have not done well. And it just takes humility to say that, oh, yes, 
he if I have not done well based on the report because the NBS is supposed to be the umpire that is not biased, taking side with any ministry or anybody. And every Nigerian can go back in the last five years and compare what the figure was and what the figure is right now. And the president can now make informed decision as to who and who can drive this. Now the quick excuse could be, oh, no, it's not my responsibility. It's the people, uh, civil servant that did not work with me or so. You know, we can keep giving excuses. But you know the person that cannot give excuse? The man whose meat in his pot has reduced. The man whose money in the bank account has reduced and is seen negative or red in his account balance. Who will he blame? Himself? No. So that is why we need to do the needful. We need to go beyond what uh, delays that we witnessed in the first term and see how we can better focus on the economy of Nigeria. Security is affected what? It affects life. Life is packed of economic hindrances. Uh, it will affect it the land of the people. Land is a major production factor. It will affect job and businesses. Those are components that we have influence on the economy of the people. And when you look at the agriculture contribution to GDP, it fell. When you look at mining, it fell. When, oil, you, when you look oil, at oil, it oil fell. Oil. So you should not be surprised that GDP fell from 2.38 to 2.01. So we should not be surprised. And look at quarter GDP. We, s we cancel the election. You know, it's the elections are over. So we don't really remember. Quarter on quarter GDP growth, we had minus 13. Minus 13 plus. I think minus 13, 8 was what we had quarter on quarter. And this was consistent with what we had in 2015. Because of elections, I would say, we have it now, do we explain in 2016, recession 2017, minus 13 has been consistent. For instance, 2015 minus 13.9, that's first quarter. 2016 minus 13.98, which is even more than that. And 2017 minus 20.26, I'm talking about just first quarters now. And the last, like, first quarter of last year, 2018, minus 13.4, and now we are back in the territory of minus 13 hit. Now let's, le le let's try as much as possible to look at this um, next level document. I did say during my intro, uh, when I saw the next level graphics and all of that, I said, okay, fine. I looked at the APC manifesto. Uh, they did say we are all going higher. Now in the forward of the APC manifesto, le let me just take something here, which uh, they said, the next four years will be significant for our country. Nigeria is faced with a choice to keep building a new Nigeria, making a break from its tainted past, which favored an opportunistic few. Our choices will shape us, our economic security and our future's prosperity. Nigeria, more than ever before, needs a stable and people-focused government to move the agenda of our country For Join us on this, next level, on, the, on this journey to the next level of a prosperous, strong, and stable Nigeria. The question is, what will next level be? And what does next level hold for Nigerians, especially looking at the l analysis of the change government? We saw that, you know, in the change government, a lot of that, they were doing what they were doing, but they were also blaming the 16 years of PDP. We said, oh, they cost us, they cost us. We are, we are managing our resources right and all of that. A lot of them were corrupt. They stole the country's money and all of that. Now, change government is transiting to the next level. What do you think that the next level should be? And how should... Can, can Nigerians take the next level to the bank, bearing in mind that the change government has not been too rosy and too palatable on the plates of Nigerians? Now, f first, your, question, your first question is what should next level be? Next level should be um, a place where unemployment figure remains single digit. Next level should be when we have um, um, single digit inflation. Next level should be when we have improved exchange rate. Next level for Nigeria should be um, when we have uh, better GDP, uh, not two point. We can now grow by five, six, seven to ten percent. That those are should, should be next level. Where our human development index should go beyond 152 out of 190 countries. So top 100, at least if you are not getting to the first or second, top 100, while is of doing business, will further improve from 146 to about 90 Haiti region. Those are the next level that I'm expecting that for next four years, and that is why we so ever will be driving the course of action for government will really matter. Not the person, but the policy and the support such person 
would have uh, from Nigerians because now President Buhari is having his last name according to the Constitution. So the president will be looking for legacy. Now, legacy, legacy, legacy. Yes. You know, when I was ruminating uh, around this topic this morning, the question also came to my mind. Should, be, should it be that the next four, level, uh, next four years is about legacy? Yeah, or the next four years is just about, it's a norm, apart from President Jonathan that did not get a second term, or is a norm that the president that was there or that is there should have it should another, be. another four years. I don't know if you understand. I do, I do. It should, be, it should be about legacy. You understand? Should it be about legacy or should it be a, a, about improving the lives of Nigerians or... Same more, same more. Let's just stay there. We've gotten another four years. Let things continue the same way. Since modern democracy, this will be the second president that will have four years, apart from President Olusha Gombasanjo. The next president that would have another four years is President Momodu Buhari. So President Obasanjo uh, was once military head of state. President Momodu Buhari was formerly military head of state. President Obasanjo has said that second term will be more of legacy. Whether that happen or not is another discussion for another day. President Buhari should look at what is it because Nigeria has a lot of problems from rail to road to poverty to unemployment to health to so how do we solve this problem so all of this problem can be solved when we have done the needful which is how do we generate more revenue revenue is a bigger challenge i saw in the face in the eyes of mr president when it was presented 2019 budget to i think november or december last year to the national assembly he said the biggest challenge for anybody that will remain president or that will come back to lay uh, budget to the National Assembly will be the issue of revenue. Of course, Nigeria were not listening to what he was saying line by line. We were looking at those who were wailing and hailing at that particular presentation. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the challenge he's having right now. That is why taxes, left, right, and center discussion is coming up. Do we increase DAT? Do we increase uh, education tax? Or which type, what type of tax do we increase, um, say, uh, other form of taxation so that government can have revenue? Now that global uh, revenue we have from crude oil is even reduced in terms of output by 0 0.02 for first quarter 2019 um, when you compare that to what happened uh, in the last quarter. So for me, President Buhari is sitting or is, is, is having a chance to choose whether he wants to build legacy or not. Now but this legacy will not tantamount to much when unemployment figure is not going back to single digits where he met it, when inflation is not going back to single digits where he met it, when um, health is not better than he met it, when education is not better. If we still continue to see videos of that girl, of that school, saying that, flog me, I will, I will mm. prefer to stay in school. When, if you want to take your child to school, it will never cross your mind, even in your miserability, to take the child to public school. Because everybody will say, what is wrong with you? And my fear is that the next 20 years, what happened to primary and secondary school, may I have as well presented itself to higher institution, sure. the UNN of this world, to AU of this world, your, the uh, UI of this world, and ABU of this world. The university that we take so much pride, these five or ten universities that are called federal, early university, federal university, we might have also lost the glory in there. So mm -hmm. uh, what will President Buhari do? Do we need to start forming PPP such that even though government don't have enough revenue to finance all of these things, including our roads, government might be looking at alternative in making all of these work. What kind of ministers should President Buhari come up with now? Bearing in mind, I'm hoping that I don't get to see what happened before. Now, again, that it will take a, a President Buhari another six months. I don't think he will. I don't think <laughs> I so. Do President, don't even think it. <laughs> you know? So I, I don't see that. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know whether it's me or, I'm, I'm, or perhaps the, it's happening. Are you seeing a sense of urgency? In terms of let's kick start once May 29 is yeah, comes, well, well, for what me, kind of people should we be expecting within the corridors of power? What kind of people should have access to the president in terms of who are, you know, his team people, people that will work with him? Uh, the challenge I've noticed about politicians and politics uh, generally is that for Nigeria, those who seem to know are not within the corridor, the surrounding of politics. Those that they've been found around politics or people in politics have spoken about, you see, our leaders, state governors, they are not spiritual. The same with president. They we work with whoever they are found. 
And Nigeria is giving them ultimatum to say, you need to appoint on time. So for me, I would want the president and his team to go beyond shallow, I mean, surface um, search to see which Nigeria is making contribution. If you need to bring people in private sector that are making significant contribution, and we give, provide well, them we with enough the environment. The, uh, uh, balancing the political side, of course. Yeah, people will say, oh, we've contributed so much. Exactly. For you to become a president exactly. Again. So, so those are the challenges, the bottlenecks of appointment. So if political party would complain, they should also know that if the president does not perform, what we mean is that Nigerians might decide to go for another option in 2023. But with better performance, the political party will remain, even though the president might have hen I mean, might have completed his tenure. But if there is no performance, then you start seeing grumbling, pages of newspaper, online, offline, and everywhere, which will start shaping and informing Nigerians of what the next coming period will okay. look like. Okay, let's take a few comments on Twitter. Emmanuel Otong says, I really love Paul Alaje. Uh, pragmatism approach, balance, non condemning or blame, apportioning, uh, but focused on policy analysis with no outright yes or no answers. Very excellent choice of words. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's quite interesting. Mm. Okay, Elvis is saying, what are the policy trusts of the Minister of Finance and the FIR boss in terms of fiscal policy and of the luckily uh, reappointed CBN boss? Uh, in terms of monetary policy geared towards economic stability as they get set to lead us to the next level. Uh, Ochoa Amado said, we can't take away the impact of corruption by previous administration. The current administration is a good resource manager. If not, we would have remained in recession. When the price of crude went so down, the government was able to weather the storm. Next level is a huge promise. Uh, Elvis says, conceive or concede. Uh, Patria says, at what rate is the GDP supposed to be growing for the economy to be growing? It's supposed to be growing more than 2%, I can tell you that. It no, should be even more than population yes, growth yeah, more than rate. But that's it, more than population growth rate, which is yes. over 3%. Yes. So we, if we are growing 6 7% now, it's not bad. And it's that's, not. In fact, we grew 6 7% 2011, 2014. 20, yes, in the last, uh, when uh, uh, President Obasanjo was there and all, and it was not even enough because then we suffered jobless uh, growth. Uh, lastly, Princess says, Nancy, according to the words of Mr. President, it's going to be tough. First look at the budget and see what was allocated for education, health, and agriculture. From there, you'll be guided. Laugh out loud. Nigeria, my beloved country. I'll be talking about the budget tomorrow. You mm -hmm. know, I told you I was th I'm starting a series which I started today. God help me for the next few days. <laughs> but let's see how it will be as we continue to set the agenda for the next level. I have your manifesto here. Ask us to take a look at it and see. If um, the plan is also achievable, and also to see how we can support government uh, to achieve all of that. I'll be giving you a graph, infographics of it in days to come. Next level says is to engage 1 million Empire graduates and skill up 10 million Nigerians on a voucher system in partnership in private sector. Let's see how that goes. Mm. Many, Paul, uh, uh, many thanks, Paul, for joining me.